Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome. I'm Jim Rooney, President and CEO of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I wanna thank you all for joining us today for Doing Business with Gilbane a new pace setters event series. Uh, you'll see many more of these events with individual companies going forward, but we're very pleased that Steve and Meredith, who I'll introduce um, uh, more appropriately in just a minute, have joined us from Gilbane uh, today. I'm sure that they'll share much more about Gilbane, the company, um, but it is one of the largest um, uh, privately held family-owned businesses uh, in the construction and development space, um, celebrating 150 uh, years of business this year. Um, as it relates to the Pace Setters program, over the past few months, we've been doing a lot of listening and reflecting here at the Chamber about the Pace Setters program uh, over the past few months in particular. When the Chamber Pace Setter Initiative was created in 2018, it was with the purpose of connecting buyers with diverse businesses of color. Uh, one key message that we've received from black and brown business owners over the past few months of listening is about access to information and opportunities with the pace set of companies. The big businesses say they want to do more business with black and brown businesses and the black and brown businesses say, let's go, I'm ready. So, so what's the problem? What we heard is that it all comes down to building bridges and connecting to supplier businesses so that they can understand a company's procurement practices, know when and how to access new bidding opportunities, build relationships now and for the longer term. Uh, but all of this can be a mystery. On top of, the, the, uh, on top of that, procurement practices are different within industries and there are differences between companies in the same industries. Today, we're going to hear from Gilbane in the construction industry, but I'll bet there's different approaches by other big construction companies like Suffolk and Lee, Comp Lee Kennedy, for example. We hope that this Pace Setter series brings transparency to corporate procurement procedures to provide real opportunity to black and brown businesses. We know at the chamber that we can't make the deals for suppliers, but we can be a bridge to information and to meaningful relationships. I want this audience to know that I believe in the Pace Setters Program and our entire team led by Celia, Bayer, and Casey are determined to make it the success that we all want it to be. We believe that we can create systemic opportunity and when procurement is used as an equity tool, it can be one of the solutions to racial wealth gaps in Massachusetts. So let's get started. I want to include a few notes before our speaker introductions, including a thank you to today's sponsors, John Hancock and Eastern Bank, partners to the Chamber in bringing relevant content to our community. We're very appreciative of their efforts and support of all of our economic opportunity and pace setters program. Uh, and their continued partnership. I also want to flag that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared on the Chamber YouTube page shortly after the presentation. Finally, be sure to submit your questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A feature, making sure to send to all panelists or by emailing questions to chamber programs at bostonchamber.com. Now I'm pleased to introduce our speakers for today from Gilbane Construction Company. Uh, Meredith Whalen is the purchasing manager in Gilbane's Massachusetts business unit. Meredith manages the extensive contractor buyout and procurement processes for Gilbane's largest and most complex projects. In addition, Meredith is a 10-year industry veteran and a champion of diversity and inclusion on Gilbane's work sites and projects. Thank you for joining us today, Meredith. Next, we have Steve Davell, Senior Vice President at Gilbane. Steve has over 26 years of experience and has been involved with landmark projects, including the Connecticut Convention Center, the Dunkin' Donuts Center, and the University of Rhode Island's Ryan Center. 
Steve has demonstrated continued commitment to diversity and inclusion and workforce development throughout his career and the many construction projects he's overseen. Thank you both for joining us, Steve and Meredith. And with that, I'll turn it over to Steve to kick it off. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction, Jim. I really, really appreciate it. So um, I want to give as much time as I possibly can to Meredith to uh, unveil you know, the behind the scenes of Gil Bain and how, how we do business. Um, we want to create more partnerships, uh, and this is the, the best way to do it. So thank you so much for having us today. I just want to share a little bit about myself and about the organization. So that good looking guy there, that's a pre pre COVID photo of me before I gave up and, and uh, grew a little facial hair. But uh, again, my name is Steve Duvall. I'm a senior vice president and I'm responsible for uh, the division of New England within uh, Gilbane. Uh, and I've been with Gilbane for 22 years. Um, my leadership philosophy um, is uh, actually directly to tied with pace setters. My leadership philosophy is to lead with your strengths and to let somebody else do your weaknesses. I promise you that uh, there are people out there that would love to do the things that you are not good at. So lead with your strengths. And a derivative, a direct derivative of that philosophy is that, of course, if everyone leads with their strengths, that diverse teams are the most successful teams. So that's my philosophy. Um, and I just wanted to underscore that with, uh, with Gil Bain's uh, practices that Meredith will be sharing today about our procurement and making sure that we have excellent, strong, diverse teams building our buildings. Before we do that, uh, if you don't, I wanna introduce Gil Bain, the company, in case you haven't heard of, heard of us. Uh, we were born 150 years ago uh, we are a family-owned, family-operated company. The key element is family-operated. So right now, the fourth, fifth, and sixth generation uh, Gilbane family members uh, are, are among the employed at the organization. We have 3,000 employees uh, internationally. And in Massachusetts, we actually have 150 employees in Massachusetts. Uh, we do $6 billion worth of work last year. Um, and in Massachusetts, uh, last year we did $800 million worth of work, just so you kind of get the, the size of the company and the size of um, what, where we are in, in Massachusetts and Boston. Our New England headquarters are in Boston. Uh, and you can see from the slide that our core values uh, drive everything that we do. Um, and it's tied directly into, you know, directly into you know, my philosophy of diverse teams being the most successful teams, but you can't do that without a solid uh, base. And you can see uh, also that safety is a major, major driver in what we do. We want the people that come to our job sites to leave uh, in the same condition or better than when they started each day. So that's a little bit of myself and the company. Uh, I wanna turn it over to Meredith and acknowledge, thank you, Meredith, for sharing this today with everyone. Um, you are very special to me and the organization, but this is, this is awesome, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Meredith Whalen with Gilbane, and I am a purchasing manager here in our Massachusetts Boston office. Um, I just want to touch on, you know, Gilbane and some of the opportunities, how to get pre-qualified and on some of our bid lists on these construction projects. So to start, Gilbane is committed to MWBE utilis utilization. Um, you know, Steve's on this call. Steve's dedicated. As he stated, he oversees our New England offices, but this goes all the way to the top. Um, you know, Jim touched on, we're family owned, privately held. I've had Tom Gilbane personally call me. Um, you know, internally we have our names and faces show up if someone internal is calling you. And it was probably almost 10 years ago when I first started, my phone rings and I looked down and said Tom Gilbane. So I obviously got a little nervous, but I answered it. He's a friendly guy. And he was calling to ask on the last project I bought out what my MWBE percentages were and how I did overall. Um, it wasn't a public project. It wasn't anything where the owner had their goals. It was Gilbane has internal goals on every project that we buy that we want at least 10% of our spend to be with minority or women or diverse companies. And it's something he actually picked up the phone and followed through with where it was only Gil Bain's requirement that he was checking on. So that really stuck with me. It gave me the confidence throughout my career. 
that this is a serious thing. You know, I can push our project teams, I can push back to say, you know, where are we going to spend? How are we going to get more diverse spend? And know that I'm backed up all the way to the top. So that really helps. Um, so Gilbane, we try to mirror, you know, the communities in which we build. So whether it's in Roxbury or downtown Boston or, you know, wherever the project may be, UMass Boston, we're really trying to reflect that with our workforce and also with our spend. Um, and like I said, the second bullet point there is even if it's the project or the owner has no uh, internal diversity goals, Guild Bain has our own goals internally of every project has to have a 10% or more diverse spend. And that's taken very seriously. Um, and to show to date, you know, just this year, our Boston office has issued over 14% of our contracts to MWBE contractors. So that's a pretty good accomplishment. Uh, we can always do better, we're always striving to do better, but it is a serious thing and there, there is some serious contracts to be won out there. Uh, so some opportunities for diverse companies to work with us are definitely in the public market. So anything that's publicly funded, any schools, um, anything that's through DCAM, they have public goals of 10.4% have to be contracted with M or WBEs. And that's taken very seriously on the state side as well. So that really is a good market if you're trying to get in um, to become a certified MWBE contractor and be able to work on those projects um, where there are written laws and goals that you know we have a goal to obtain a 10.4% minority spend. This is actually increasing too statewide. So uh, DCAM is changing the rules for upcoming chapter 149 and 149A projects where it used to be 10.4% combined. Um, they're now gonna separate that goal back out. I think about seven years ago, uh, they combined it together. It used to be a separate goal of a minority versus woman spend. So they're gonna break that back apart. So it's gonna leave more opportunities for minority companies to get work on public projects. Um, and they're also gonna increase that goal. So <clears throat> it's increasing and then based on where the project is located and you know what the resources are, the goals are gonna be even higher towards you know, 13 or 15 or probably even 20 or 30% minority and women spend. So that's some exciting news where you know, people are really carving out these opportunities for the minority and women or diverse companies to get the contracts directly with the GCs or through a sub tier on the project. So if you're interested in working in those public markets, the bidding structure is a little different, not to get into it, but there's some packages that are bid, they're called public bid packages, filed sub bid. They're bid directly to either the owner or the state um, through DCAM. But to be considered towards that 10.4 or the increasing goal, uh, you have to be certified with the Supplier Diversity Office. And I highly recommend this um, anyways, if you're a company right now, minority owned, but you don't have a certification, I highly recommend that you take the time um, and get certified, whether it's with the Supplier Diversity Office, the City of Boston, but having that certification helps verify um, for companies such as Gilbane that you are actually minority owned. You know, it's not just smoke and mirrors, it really backs it up and makes it easier for us to track that spend internally. So if you are currently not uh, certified with the state or with another entity, let us know and we can put you in touch with the right people to get that certification and what needs to be done. Uh, it is an interview process, there is paperwork to do, but it really is a great program and it helps you know, get you in databases and makes you more searchable for the other construction managers out there as well. So there's a couple ways to do business with Gilbane. The first is to be contracted directly with us. So that means that you hold a contract with Gilbane Building Company to perform a scope of work. Uh, the next and where a lot of our minority uh, contractor opportunities lie are to be a subcontract sub tier. So that means that you're either directly contracted with the prime who we're contracted with or somewhere down the line, but your contract isn't directly with us. And we find this is the um, easiest or best way sometimes for minority contractors to work on our projects 
sometimes our projects are, you know, $150 million projects and we're issuing $20 million either electrical or site work contracts that may be too big. You can't, you don't have the bonding capacity. You don't have the backlog. You know, you've never done a project of that size. We're able to carve out parts for you to work you know, under that prime contractor and get the experience or just do a portion of the project, um, whether it's asphalt paving or the site improvements. Um, so it really opens up, you know, with bonding capacity and backlog, the opportunities that are out there. Um, and then we also have a material supplier, which means that you're just furnishing goods and not providing labor on our sites, which is also, you know, one of the best ways uh, to get involved. So Gilbane has a policy, it's nationwide, that you have to be pre-qualified with us in order to be a prime tier trade contractor. So that means if you're gonna be directly contracted with Gilbane Building Company, you need to go to www.ibidpro.com and register and complete our pre-qualification. And my next couple of slides are gonna show you what we're looking for in that pre-qualification and what our focus areas are, but this, this is an internal policy that I can't bend the rules. I can't go to Steve. I can't even go to Tom Gilbane and say, you know, we have this great minority contractor. They want to do X, but they're not pre-qualified in our system. Um, you know, that's our biggest no-no. So our biggest hurdle and what I tell everyone is go to iBid Pro and complete the pre-qual. And I'll also state, I mean, if you're looking to work for Gilbane, you're probably also looking to work for the other construction managers, you know, in the area. And all of our pre-qualifications are pretty similar, I would say, in what we're looking for. Um, so this is going to kind of give an overview of what we look for, why we look for it, and how to complete that pre-qualification. Gilbane is signatory to the carpenters and the laborers in New England. So that is also another point of um, you know, if you provide a service such as cleaning or drywall, but you're not signatory with the laborers and carpenters, unfortunately, we are not able to contract with you um, or use you on our project sites. That is Gilbane signs um, an agreement, you know, every couple of years where we agree with these unions that we're going to use the carpenters and laborers on our project. So if you have questions as well about if you're looking to become part of the union or make your company a union affiliate and you're currently not, we can also get you in touch with those proper people as well. But that's, these are kind of my first two questions when anyone asks, you know, how do I do business with Gilbane? It's A, you need to become pre-qualified through our system and B, if you're performing any work that falls under the carpenters or laborers jurisdiction, you have to be signatory to them. So one of our pre-qualification focus areas is safety. So we really, safety is Gilbane's biggest concern. Um, you know, one would think it's money or schedule or keeping the client happy, it's not. It is safety and again, that's, you know, from the bottom or from the top down, um, Gilbane really stands behind that. So we look at a subcontractor's uh, experience modification rating, that's your EMR. Um, if you have questions about, you know, how you get that information or who holds that information for you, feel free to reach out. But that's something that if you're involved, you know, in the construction world, you should really know what your experience modification is. And Gilbane has a standard of 1.0. So we're looking for your EMR to be below one. If it's above 1.0, it doesn't mean that you can't work on our project sites. It just means we're going to ask for some additional information and really dig into why, you know, your EMR is high. It might have just been, you know, an accident that not to say it couldn't have been avoided because people believe all accidents can be avoided, but if it was a slip and fall on ice versus, you know, someone doing something that intentionally harmed their cells that could have been easily avoided, we take that into account. We also ask for your OSHA 300 logs, your own internal safety plan, and your certificate of insurance. So we know kind of ahead of time whether or not you'll meet our insurance requirements and if you'll need to add you know, any costs to meet our insurance um, requirements, we know kind of upfront. We also look into experience. We're gonna ask for project references, how many people are employed, you know, recently completed projects. This really gives us an overview of what your bread and butter is. So if you're someone, you know, that's looking to bid even a million dollar um, 
site work package for us, but you did a million dollars in revenue, you know, in 2019, we're going to look at that and say, you know, this one project is equal to all the work that you did last year and kind of assess whether or not it's the right fit for you. Uh, Gilbane's biggest thing is we want to make sure we find the right project for the right people and not sign someone up, you know, just to meet goals or just to meet numbers and then put everyone in a bad situation. So our biggest thing, you know, is to find the right fit um, and really let subcontractors grow from there. The last thing that we look at is your financial strength. So this helps, um, you know, understand your backlog, what your bonding, bonding limits are, um, you know, how your company did, if there's anything that we need to be aware of, if we should be issuing joint checks to some of your vendors to kind of help with payments. It, it really gives the overall structure of your company um, and how you're doing. And these are all, um, confidentially reviewed. I don't even have access to them in our system. We have a pre qual department of people that take it very seriously um, and confidentially review these financial statements to see. So this really also gives us an overview of, is this project the right fit for this subcontractor you know, to work on for us to see if it's a project that falls into their wheelhouse or not. So again, just to touch on a couple of items, um, the prime tier is ibidpro.com. And I actually want to um, go on to show you guys what you need to do. So when you go in, it's gonna ask for a couple of items that you should be aware of um, and have handy for when you log in. The first is which is gonna ask for your um, tax ID number. So that's how we, tie all of the companies into our system. That way we know you're not making duplicate accounts. Um, subcontractors have one account for their whole company. That's always a question that we get because you might have, you know, the president makes an account, the estimator makes an account, your controller makes an account. Um, we keep it simple that every company has one account, one username and password, and then there can be separate permission levels set from there so that, you know, your estimator can't see your financials that are in there, only your controller can, or the estimator, you know, can't sign contracts or change orders, but a PM for a certain project can sign the change orders on that project. Um, so IBID Pro really has a lot of function, functionality, um, but to go through and show you um, kind of what's needed to become pre-qualified. So like I said, you'll need your tax ID number and then you'll need some of those attachments that I went through. So you'll need a copy of your certificate of insurance, um, just proof of insurance is, you know, it doesn't have to be made out to Gilding, Gilding Company or anything like that. Your experience modification rating, your OSHA 300 logs and your financials will all have to be uploaded. Um, the biggest thing I'm gonna state, if you're a new company and say you were just founded this year, you won't have an EMR yet. Your EMR takes three years to acquire. Um, or if you don't have financials yet, because it's not year ending, we'll work with you um, and we'll assess what you have. We might ask for, you know, internal interim financials or take a look at what you have, what your company, you know, what's back in your company currently and just keep up with it so that once you do have an EMR, we get that information, we get it, get it uploaded. This is a list of our upcoming opportunities. Um, so these are just some of the public projects that we have in Massachusetts currently that we'll be bidding in the next couple of months. Um, the first is the DCAM multi-campus MEP infrastructure upgrades. And if you're not familiar with the public bidding, like I said, just reach out to me and I can let you know if, if the scope of work you perform is something that will be publicly bid or if it will be privately bid through our system. Um, the DCAM package is all privately bid. This is a little uh, interesting of a job, but it's all privately bid, but you have to be DCAM certified in order to bid to us. Um, the next is Brookline Elementary. That's a chapter 149A. That should be bidding the beginning of next year. Um, and that is um, one of those filed sub bids. So painting, 
masonry, roofing, trades like that fall under the public sector where you have to be DCAM certified, go through a state qualification process and all of that. Um, but then there are some packages that will bid privately through Gilbane and through our iBid Pro system where you have to be pre-qualified with Gilbane. Uh, another project coming up is Shattuck Hospital. Again, that should be the beginning of next year. That's also a public project. Um, so I cannot stress enough, if you do not have your SDO certification or a certification from you know, a certifying entity, please do work on that um, or reach out and we can help assist you. We have some great contacts over at the Supplier Diversity Office that can help assist get you guys those certifications. Um, and then Gilbane has what we call our interiors group. <clears throat> so our interiors group does exactly what it kind of sounds like, interior fit outs. So we might be doing you know, uh, a simple project as easy as a new office needs new carpet and paint. This interiors team will go in and do that. And that is a great space for a lot of um, smaller companies to start as prime contractors with Gilbane. Because some of their projects, they can range from, you know, $10,000 to $10 million, but it's a much different scope of work where we're, we're also can break things out a lot easier easier. So if we're doing, you know, a six floor fit out, we might be able to break one of the floors out if you're a flooring, a diverse flooring contractor and say you're going to do this floor and someone else is going to do the other five. So our Gilbane Interiors Group um, is a great opportunity to get involved as a prime tier sub. However, they have the same qualification process that the rest of our projects do. So if you're ever going to contract directly with Gilbane, ever going to work for us nationwide, you have to get pre-qualified through our iBid Pro system. So that was the end of my PowerPoint. Um, if people have questions, I can take them now. I also just wanted to show everyone kind of the iBid Pro website so you can get a feel for what it looks like and what you need to do in order to get pre-qualified. So um, we have some of the questions over here. So um, one of the questions was, are there any trades that you see good opportunities for businesses owned by people of color? So really, we see all businesses. I will say um, a lot of the MEPs, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, we struggle a lot to get diverse participation in those trades. There's just not a lot of mechanical or electrically owned um, minority companies. So if that's something that you guys specialize in, I'm not saying that they're not out there and that they don't do work for us. It's just, you know, there's probably one or two in each of those fields. So it, it makes it a hard um, place for us to get that diverse participation. But other than that, we find that, you know, a lot of drywallers, that's, that's a great trade as far as, you know, being involved with the carpenters and laborers, site work, um, that we can get diverse participation there and that that's a good trade with the laborers and carpenters to build your workforce. Um, so someone asked about mentoring. So one thing I do want to touch on is Gilbane has a, we call it the trade contractor training program. Um, so we were actually the first CM in the state to start a training, a contractor training program for minority companies. Uh, it's a great program. I help run it. So if you have any questions or if you're interested in joining the program, please email me directly. Um, and I can put my contact info back up. Um, but our trade contractor program really focuses on um, letting subs understand how Gilbane and other large CMs do work. And I keep referencing other large CMs because, you know, Gilbane would selfishly like to, you know, have all the diverse participation and have all these subs work on our projects. But we know 
the more qualified subcontractors we can get out there in the pool that work for all the CMs, the better for all of us. So we're looking to really, you know, help build people, help build people's backlogs, help keep these diverse companies going. Um, so our trade contractor program makes it that we have uh, weekly classes that will go over, you know, purchasing, estimating, scheduling, project management. So it makes it less intimidating to work on these multi-million dollar projects because that was a lot of the feedback we were getting from these smaller diverse subcontractors was you know i've never been on a project of this size or i could never work for a company as large as yours and it really broke it down it had them meet you know our chief estimators our chief purchasing agents our business unit leaders you know people like steve would teach the class and now steve had a personal relationship with each of these students where they were able to reach out if they needed anything um, and really break it breaks it down for them but part of our trade contractor training program is um, once you become pre-qualified which is the first class that we go over with them because i cannot stress enough how important that is that you must be pre-qualified if you're ever going to contract directly with us is they receive a mentor of someone within gilbane and it kind of becomes their champion with gilbane so if they're you know bidding a project to us or if they have questions about a project that we might be chasing or that we just won they can go to their mentor who is going to be the champion for them internally and say, hey, you should invite this person to bid or hey, you know, this person was in our trade contractor training program and I think that they would be a good fit. Um, I work in purchasing, so it's great that I'm involved in the program since, you know, I can control a lot of the bid lists and who's bidding, but it can't be just purchasing that's advocating, you know, for the minority and diverse companies. So Gilbane found the best way to do it is kind of match them with our project executives and other people within the company that did have a lot of say, you know, in who's, who's allowed to bid and who's put on projects. So that's a great way to get involved further with Gilbane as part of our trade contractor training program and through that mentorship. So um, I see in a question come through um, about someone that is um, a fabrication shop, signage shop and also for Miss Metals. Um, so yep, when you log in and do the pre-qualification, which actually, just to let you know, Michael, you guys are pre-qualified and have worked on our projects. I think you guys just did um, 100 High Street with us. Um, you were pre-qualified. It is a yearly prequal, I should also state, so it will expire and you'll have to go in and update your EMR and um, recent projects, your W9, things like that, so everything stays up to date and we have an accurate snapshot of your business. But you're able to put in, um, you know, which CSI codes you can actually work for. So you can put in signage, Miss Metals. If you also did, you know, carpentry or structural steel, you can list them all and also list which work areas you'll work in. So a lot of subs in this area will list, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, or you might be nationwide, you can put all states, but it really helps. We're able to run lists. So if I want to run a bid list for, you know, all Miss Metal subs, that are non-union and are willing to work in New Hampshire, I can run that and see everyone that's ever made a profile in our company and selected those criteria. And then from there, I can search, are they pre-qualified? Are they not pre-qualified? You know, what was the last um, time they updated? So IBID Pro is a really great system for us that keeps all that information and makes it accessible so that we can always search it and always update what we need to. Um, so one of the questions was, can a company be signatory to the union for just the job they are bidding or do they have to totally become a union shop? So <clears throat> that is, it's a totally a possibility to sign on for just one project. However, that is up to the unions. Um, so Gilbane would be willing to facilitate that conversation with the company and open up the path to say, you know, hey, either we don't have enough union coverage to begin with or this is why we feel they would be a good fit, you know, to become signatory for just this project. Uh, it has happened. 
but I will say it is that is in the union's hands whether or not they would let you sign for just the one project or if they want you to sign on. So um, there was a question about the doing business with the Gilbane, the prequal, the same as a distributor who's providing commodities such as PPE products. So if you're um, furnishing products just like hard hats or anything else, you do not need to become pre-qualified through our system. Um, however, I can send some information out. Uh, we now have a supply chain group and we use the Coupa system to make sure you're set up in there so that when our project teams search, if they're looking for, you know, a cask hard hat, um, your company has provided pricing and that you are part of that um, Coupa system as well so that we can competitively add you to our list and they can easily order supplies such as, you know, hard hats, safety vests, things of that nature. Um, so one of the questions was, does Gilbane consider compost or waste vendors as a sub tier or prime tier? So it depends um, if it's just, you know, a prime, a prime tier would be someone that was providing the dumpsters for our construction service, which means, you know, you have a dumpster company, and you're going to do the pulls, you know, either weekly or as often as we need them when we call. But if you have an end product of, you know, you provide a compost um, or we're putting in uh, dumpsters or a trash compactor for the owner of what we're building, that's something that uh, we can work out either we're going to buy direct and furnish and install for them or get you in touch with the owner to make sure your products can be specified or that they know that these are products offered. Um, one of the questions was, you mentioned that if a single contract represents, say, 50% of the work done by a company in the prior year, the contract might not be a good fit. So really, it's on a case-by-case -case basis how we do our pre-qualification. Um, so once you're pre-qualified with Gilbane, we also then look at your financials and kind of come up with an, what we call an aggregate limit. So that means that's the amount of work we'll let you have open with Gilbane and any point in time um, and our risk department does that based off like i said your financials um, significant projects your your revenues from last year they take all of that into account with how they come up with that um, aggregate limit so if you don't qualify for a project we're not just gonna you know dismiss you we'll dig deeper into it and have conversations and let you understand either why we're not inviting you to bid or have the conversation of we want to invite you to bid but it looks like this might be either the largest project you've ever done or you know as as much revenue as you've done last year what can we do to help mitigate these issues make you aware you know whether it's joint checks um I will say Gilbane has done in the past, and it's not you know, an everyday occurrence, but we might do um, bi-weekly payments instead of monthly payments, things like that, that if we can get the owner involved or understand the subcontractor's needs ahead of time, uh, we're willing to make those adjustments. Like I said, we're not looking to set anyone up for, to fail. So the more successful our subcontractors are and everyone is on the project, the more successful Gilbane is. And that's the bottom line. So we're not really looking, you know, to sign someone up for a project that's too big and let you just flounder on your own. We're gonna have those conversations up front before it's an issue. So one of the questions as well was um, for non-construction services like marketing or IT. And I will say Gilbane is very heavy as far as we do almost everything internally. I'm not saying there aren't those opportunities for them to arise. Um, but if you want to email me, you know, if you're an IT company or you do uh, event planning or marketing or anything like that, I can get you in touch with those 
department heads that run those departments to see if there are opportunities that come up where, you know, I can't speak to how their departments are run, but there are opportunities, obviously, for catering, for other opportunities within Gilbane outside of just being a subcontractor on our construction projects. So yeah, like Jim just asked, there are opportunities outside of construction, like catering events, things of that nature. Um, but we do mostly everything that I can, IT, marketing, um, accounting, payroll is all done internally. But again, I'm not saying that there aren't opportunities there for us to either outsource part of it or what opportunities might arise within those departments that if you wanna shoot me an email, you know, about your company and what the scope of work is that you perform, we'd be more than happy to get you in touch with those department heads directly. So a company new to our bidding process, um, I definitely recommend once you start the pre-qualification or once you've pressed submit that you reach out to me and we can have a conversation about, you know, what do you foresee your bread and butter project? Like what is your ideal project size, project scope? You know, what kind of bid list are you looking to get on? Do you want us to send you, you know, everything we're bidding and let you decide? Or do you only want to see the projects that are a million dollars and under? Do you only want to see, you know, interior fit out projects? So we have those conversations a lot with subs that are just getting on our bid list and just getting started with Gilbane so that we're not inundating you with information or so we're not leaving you off our bid list, bid list completely because you filled something out incorrectly. So I would say definitely follow up, definitely follow up with me, say, hey, I submitted my prequal. Can you take a look? You know, I, I haven't found out if I'm pre-qualified or not, or here's the type of projects that I want to bid. Um, and then we can start the dialogues that way. Another great thing that we do is sometimes, obviously with COVID, uh, it becomes a little bit more challenging, but we would host what we call lunch and learns which is an opportunity for you to get in front of, you know, our estimating, purchasing, upper management, project executives, our interiors group, and kind of let us know a little bit more about you, um, which past projects you've done, um, you know, how your company, what your company values are, and it really helps us put, you know, a face to the name. We're trying to hold those vir virtually right now, so we'll let you know how that goes, but that is another opportunity to kind of um, follow up once your pre-qualification is submitted. So if after this, if people are interested to go to www.ibidpro.com and complete the pre-qualification, if you have any questions along the way, just feel free to reach out to me, email or call. Um, we also have a pre-qual department that they're pretty helpful. If you can't get something to attach, you can email it to them and they can attach it for you. Uh, but I can't stress enough that if you're looking to contract directly with us on our construction projects, that that is the first step. Uh, are there any opportunities for small engineering design firms on Gilbane projects? So yes, there are. Um, I will say the majority of our projects, uh, we're not hiring those, um, that scope of work directly. However, we do do some design build, design assist, uh, where we would hold the contract with the engineer or design firm. Um, so there are opportunities out there. And then there are opportunities where we have to team up a lot and pursue projects, um, you know, and we're more than willing to team up with minority owned companies and pursue those types of projects as well. We can also, I mean, I can't stress enough that when I talked about our contractor training program and mentor, mentee, um, protege aspect of it, that it's not just for working on Gilbane, you know, we're set up to help all these companies grow within the industry as well. So if there's, you know, an owner that you want to meet or a larger architecture firm that you're trying to, you know, team up with yourself, we can make those introductions just because we deal with a lot of them. Um, one story I have from one of our past students that was involved in the trade contractor program was they called and said, you know, we're trying to get in with this other 
construction manager who was a competitor of ours. You know, is there any way that you could put in a good word for us? So I shot it up the chain um, to, you know, the person that was in Steve's seat before Steve a couple of years ago. And they reached out to the owner of that construction management company, you know, our competitor and said, hey, here's someone that took our class, a minority company, they'd like to meet you. The next day, that company had a meeting. So it, it's not just, you know, how you do work with Gilbane. We're really looking to help build the industry and build you guys and all these minority contractors from the bottom up because the more qualified minority contractors we have, the better for everyone. Is it any other questions? So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Jim Rooney. So let me. Mm, okay. People, uh, I think I'm on. Um, Meredith and Steve, uh, thank you so much, Meredith. That was so much information. If there are three big takeaways, um, uh, they are that if you want to get um, involved with Gilbane on state run projects, um, get certified by the state. Uh, if you want to do business of any kind uh, with Gilbane, get pre-qualified. Uh, the way to do that is, uh, is in the chat feature and, and we'll certainly share that. Um, and if you just want to, you know, maybe early stage companies that um, they want to grow their business and want to develop a mentoring relationship with one of the premier construction companies um, in this country, really, um, uh, there's a program. Uh, so sign up for mentoring. Meredith has offered to, um, to um, be a conduit to enable you to, to, uh, to sign up for that. So um, great messaging, Meredith and Steve, and thank you so much for your, um, your presentation and your participation. Uh, today, as I said at the beginning, this is uh, this is the beginning of a new series that we've launched under the Pace Setters program um, called "Doing Business with," um, and we're going to continue to feature a number of companies that uh, our suppliers in the Black and Brown community, in particular, may be interested in. So here's the upcoming schedule, and and you'll get this information on our website. Uh, as well. But on September 22nd, uh, we will have a discussion like this, doing business with the Boston Red Sox. Uh, on October, they could use some uh, relief pitching if there's any relief pitchers out there, by the way. Uh, on October 14th, uh, we'll have doing business with Berkshire Bank. On October 28th, we'll have doing business with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, and we will continue to announce doing business with um, uh, sessions as uh, as we sign up companies. There are many more in the queue and we'll be talking to the people uh, much like Meredith did today that will explain and try to demystify how to do business with those companies. As I said, you can find out more about uh, those programs and all of our programs at the Chamber by visiting bostonchamber.com. Once again, thank you all for joining. Thank you to Gilbane for uh, for kicking off this series, and thank you uh, to the Chamber team, Bea, Casey, Celia, everyone else, uh, Lorene, for, uh, for making this possible, uh, and uh, everyone else have a great day. Thanks.